Hi, I'm Teresa, and today I'm going to be arguing how the negative impacts of global warming on the environment are going to destroy all life on Earth for future generations. My first supporting claim is that habitats will be destroyed so the animals that were once living in those habitats will have a low chance of survival. And my second claim states how global warming won't just affect animal life, but will also directly affect human health. So let's get into my first claim about uh, explaining that animal habitats will be exterminated if large portions of greenhouse gases and pollutants are still trapped in Earth's atmosphere. More animals will be non-existent due to the inability to adapt to the changing environment surrounding them. An article from the Environmental Protection Agency explains how the Earth gets warmer, plants and animals that need to live in cold places like on mountaintops or in the Arctic might not have a suitable place to live. If the Earth keeps getting warmer, up to one-fourth of plants and animals on Earth could become extinct within 100 years. It is known that taking one animal out of a uh, cycle can affect an entire ecosystem, so imagine what taking hundreds out can do. Um, let's look at a more specific, exam specific example about the effects of temperature and how it can affect bees. Uh, after extensive research, NASA has proclaimed the shift in seasons may already be causing the life cycles of pollinators, like bees, to be out of sync with flowering plants and trees. This mismatch can limit the ability of both pollinators and plants to survive and reproduce, which would reduce food availability throughout the food chain. Global warming will cause a decrease in sustainable food, and that will affect the reproduction of animals. Growing seasons will last longer, so animals will have to start see see seeking food earlier, and those resources that they used to use for food will no longer exist, so they'll have to leave their own habitat. Um, with the increase of limited food sources, animals will have to turn against each other, and only the strongest will survive. So all forms of life will hit a downfall, plants, animals, humans, everything. Getting into my last claim, climate change will directly affect human health. If these patterns continue and we cease to decrease the amount of pollutants in the air, uh, air quality will definitely worsen. The Environmental Protection Agency also found that this decrease in clean air can lead to asthma attacks and other respiratory and cardiovascular health effects. It's harder for humans to breathe properly when the pure oxygen in the air isn't like at its standards that it should be. Um, with worsened air quality comes an outbreak of vector-borne diseases. But the EPA also states, vectors like mosquitoes or ticks can carry infectious pathogens such as bacteria or protozoa and can tr transmit them to humans. Changes in temperature, precipitation, and extreme events increase, increases the geographic range of diseases spread by vectors and can cause the viruses occurring early in the year. So the increase in temperature will cause natural disasters and those natural disasters will be basically the transportation for the vectors to spread all across the globe. And it will be harder to prevent these life-threatening viruses because it'll be a lot different than it has been before and it'll be harder to um, help the humans because it'll be stronger. Um, human health will hit a setback if these conditions worsen. And alongside the, defi uh, the yeah, deficiency of air quality, the amount of um, drinkable water sources will decrease. The EPA released a statement explaining, the factors related to climate change affect the growth, survival, and spread of water-related illness. Whether or, not, whether or not that illness results from exposure to contaminated water or fish is dependent on a complex set of factors, including human behavior, social determinants of health that may affect the person's exposure, sensitivity, and adaptive capability. So in simpler terms, the occurrence of natural disasters and influence of factors will contaminate many water sources, so the population will be left with scarce amount of resources for survival. This will make it easier for humans to develop viruses and get sick, and harder for them to rid their body of the virus because they're not adapted. Overall, the changes in temperature involved with global warming will slowly but surely destroy life on our environment and weaken human health globally.
All right, we get the how word again, so that's a little bit problematic, but ultimately we can tell what the proposition is. There's a preview of what the secondary claims are. That's pretty uh, straightforward. Uh, they're both dramatic. Uh, one has to do with the habitat being destroyed, and the other has to do with human beings being destroyed. So that's, that's okay. The animal argument uh, that you start with, there's a complex relationship uh, between the animals that is being talked about. You did have some evidence from the EPA that talks about uh, the impact of temperatures on uh, animals and that up to a quarter of them could be lost in the next hundred years. Uh, it does sound a little bit speculative, but uh, there is some authority behind that, so it doesn't sound like it's uh, completely unreasonable. Uh, what that inference is based on would probably be helpful if you could tell us how the EPA arrived at this conclusion. Uh, that would maybe strengthen the argument. The bees is an example I thought was a good way to try and accomplish that. Uh, the NASA information is, again, also a little speculative. It says it's possible that there are shifts that have caused a lack of synchronicity between the growing cycle and the bees. And uh, there's no data that's being presented. I assume that we're getting the conclusion of NASA. Maybe an explanation of what data they used to arrive at that conclusion would strengthen that particular piece of information. Um, it was not clear to me how the air quality is affected by global warming. That needs to be explained a little bit more. Uh, the water quality issue is also a little unclear how that is related to global warming. Uh, even though the EPA is your source on this, there has to be some explanation. Uh, I'm just not going to take the word of some agency that's nameless, in fact, and doesn't explain how it arrived at its conclusion. So you need to provide uh, some explanation. I thought there was also a piece of counterintuitive evidence when you were talking about the water related diseases and uh, shortages because in essence your argument says there are several complex factors that are involved in this so attributing it to one of those things seems to be out of line with what the evidence is actually saying and the link to global warming is uh, you know a minimal one compared to several other factors that are presented in that particular quote which seems to sort of undermine the position that you're taking you have a tendency to rush through the presentation I think you could pace yourself a little bit more um, the uh, like I said I think the evidence that you have is good I do think that you need to explain some of it a little bit more and you could use a little bit of diversity from sources on some of those particular points but the explanations are good uh, the whole vector thing I mean I, I understood the point that you're making there uh, it would be nice if there was some data that went beyond the speculation about what could happen and showed that it is in fact happening all right thank you <laughs>